Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we'll do a little something different. I'm actually going to rank suit brands from A to B, C, D, all the way to F. I'm only going to focus on ready-to-wear suit brands. And of course, there's a certain level of subjectivity, but we put all of our opinions, experiences into this, so I hope you get value out of it. <laughs> Some of the brands you mentioned will also offer made to measure stuff or sometimes even a higher level like bespoke. But we're not going to focus on that. We'll just look at off the rack, ready to wear suits that you can buy right off the shelf. I list the suits in no particular order, and the best category is A, which is basically why I'm not wearing this right now. Then there's B, which is basically now we're in business. C, I guess I'm ready to wear this. D, slightly above sweatpants, and F, suited for the trash. I'm going to limit myself to about 30 to 40 seconds for each brand. Or better yet, Chris or cameraman is going to do it. Right, Chris? Now, keep in mind, no matter how well a suit is rated, it could be the very best suit in the world and A, it's not going to be good for you if it doesn't fit. To learn how a suit should fit, check out this video here. Last but not least, before we get started, keep in mind, these are my and our team's opinions, and as such, they're somewhat subjective. Even though I'd argue we put a lot of thought into it, we have a broad range of experience, we've worn lots of these brands extensively, and have an informed opinion. Let's start with H&M. H&M is the epitome of throwaway fashion in my mind. Everything they offer in terms of suiting, yes, including their premium line, is a solid F suited for the trash. Why? Well, they're cheap, it's not high quality. Yes, you can open the cuff buttonholes, but that's no longer a hallmark of a quality suit. Now, what about Zara suits? They're similar to H&M, maybe a little more fashion forward, catwalk focus, maybe a little more expensive, but ultimately, in my book, still an F, suited for the trash. If you get a suit, get something you can wear that is not at that quality level with that kind of a styling that goes out of fashion super quick. Suit supply. Well, actually, we did an in-depth video, Is It Worth It? Suit Supply, and you can see all of our nuanced opinions in there. In a nutshell, I think it's well suited to someone who is slim, who likes a modern European style suit. Because of that, their sizing all runs quite large. For example, I needed a 46 or 56 in their jacket size, which normally I'm a 44. I also couldn't find pants that would fit me neither off the rack nor made to measure. So that's something to keep in mind. But if you're slim and you like the silhouette, I think it's a good entry level point for your first suit. So I'd rate it maybe a C minus. Maybe for me personally, even worse, because I couldn't get a suit, but uh, that's just me. Next up, we've got Spear McKay, brand from Canada. Overall, they're priced similar to Suit Supply. I think they're a good value pick. They use decent fabrics. It's about a half canvas construction. I think you can also upgrade to stuff. They have a higher line with full canvas construction. It's ultimately not the best suit you'll ever buy, but pretty good value. I'd value it as a C. Bonobos is a relatively inexpensive suit brand. I really don't like the fitter jackets. To learn more about that, check out our video on best blazers under $500 here. With suits, it's no different. So I'd say stay clear, F. Next up, Isaiah. Their suits are pricey. I think retail, you know, around three and a half thousand all the way up to $5,000 plus. They are often in a range of, let's say, a Keton or Cesare Artolini, and I'll talk more about those brands later. They've been really popular in the US. They're known for the little coral clip that's usually in their lapel buttonhole. I think workmanship overall is quite high. It's not as high as, as Artolini or Keton. Their fabrics are okay. What I like about them is their fit, for me personally, is quite nice. I think I have a nice range of movement. There is a bit of padding, full canvas. Even though the sleeves are trimmer in the silhouette, the range of movement and the comfort is quite good. I wouldn't buy it new. Sometimes you can find it on eBay for, you know, two, three hundred bucks a jacket, maybe five hundred bucks a suit. In that range, I think it's a really fair price. So overall, I'd give it a great B. Now we're in business. 
another big name, Brunello Cucinelli. Now, this is a brand that is associated with cashmere. I think they have this humanistic capitalism, very kind of socially responsible company. They have good values. Now, their actual suits are not something I like in terms of styling. They're more fashion forward. Yes, their fabrics are nice. Oftentimes they have like earth tones, rather subdued, but they're definitely more fashion-y. The jacket is shorter, not many handwork details, and the prices are astronomical. You pay like $9,000 for a tuxedo, you know, suits for six, seven, eight thousand dollars $8,000, totally off the charts. If you like the style and you can get it, you know, at 10% of the cost, still, still a high price. Otherwise, I'd read it overall in my book, just a C, because I don't like them. Tom Ford has been enjoying a lot of publicity lately. It's the official suit of James Bond. Now, I like Tom Ford and his designs. I think the silhouettes are very nice. He has wider lapels, cool shawl colored tuxedos, for example, and his suits are decent. I think they're made by Xenia Couture at a higher level. They're quite pricey. Again, would I pay retail price for them? No, I wouldn't. But if you can get them at a discount, you may want to look into that. They also have more colors sometimes. Tim Ford has great fabrics, has full canvas. So overall, I would grade them a B. Now let's talk about Brooks Brothers suit. Obviously, they have slightly different lines. It's a brand with lots of history in recent times that issues with bankruptcy and I don't know who actually owns it right now. The last time we checked their garments, they had, you know, decent level of suit, I'd say more like a suit supply level with a more traditional American aesthetic. They have lots of different sizes. So it's in that price range. I'd say it's a C, not more and not less. Next up, let's talk about the suits of Charles Tirrett. This is a brand that is more at the lower end spectrum of the price and really popular for their shirts. They've been expanding into shoes and suits and other kinds of stuff. Overall, they run quite large. For example, Jack was trying on a size 36 and it fit more like a 40. So if you like a roomier style, definitely something for you. If you're on a slimmer side, probably not. In terms of quality and workmanship, it's more in a Hawes and Curtis range. So I'd say D plus. Mm. Next up, Galliardi. It's a brand from Malta and I have quite a few sport coats from them. I like the linen-y stuff. It's kind of cool, it's summery, Mediterranean. With their suits, there were issues with their pants. They were quite slim and with my drop ratio from my waistline to my hips, it never really worked. Jack on our team has a bunch of items from them. Their suits lately have become a lot more modern, trendy and fashion-y, really slim lapels, really slim cuts. So in my book, that's a deterioration. So I'd rate them maybe a D plus. For some of their sport coats with wider lapels and interesting fabrics, I think they provide a good value and I'd rate them a little higher, maybe C minus. Next up, let's talk about Brioni, which is the Roman tailoring house that used to make 70,000 garments a year. Their Roman style is very nice. I like their old things. I would say pre-2011, they have really nice fabrics, good amount of handwork, comparable to Keton. It's a very understated suit. You could see them, for example, in the Thomas Crown Affair, the 1999 movie, very classic Italian business suit. Now, they were acquired in 2011. And if you look at their most recent models, they're owned by PPR, which is, I think, part of the caring conglomerate. They also have brands like Balenciaga and Alexander McQueen, so much more fashion forward. I think they've lost some of their good old customer base. And I also think the quality level has declined. The last time I was in Rome, I saw like a notched lapel tuxedo in their, in their window, and it's just not what it used to be. But if you can get their older stuff, be it on eBay or otherwise, I think it's awesome. I grade it a B. Next up are Oxford ready to wear suits. These are high quality, full canvas suits, lots of handwork made in the US. Styling wise, a bit more on the conservative side, especially older stuff that you find on eBay can be more like grandpa like, but it's a great brand. The prices are high, but used, you can get a much better deal for them. Suits, I would say, you know, anywhere between a thousand and a hundred dollars on the used market, new 5X and more. I have a few pieces from them. I have one custom garment, they're well-made, and overall, I give it an A grade. Drake's is a company known for their neckwear and accessories, but in recent years, they also ventured into full-fledged clothing lines. 
they always try to have the British style as seen through the lens of an Italian, so their suits are made in Italy. They have nice fabrics, solid constructions, the sizes can run a little large, but overall, it's a solid B grade. Pini Parma is a brand that I haven't known about for very long. I would say it's the next step up from suit supply in terms of ready to wear. Very Italian styling, all the pants pretty much completed, so if you don't like that style, it may not work for you. They have lots of great details for menswear enthusiasts, subtle details, these know how to hand work, so it is a B grade. Now let's talk about Sartoria Castanja and Sartoria Partenopea. They're both brands that are relatively unknown. I think they have a very high level of quality, nice full canvas construction, nice fabrics. If you get them used, they're probably gonna be super bargains because not many people know about them. Sartoria Castanja, I would rate a B. Sartoria Partenopea, maybe something in between a B and a C. Now the suits from Banana Republic, I would grade an F and Y, you can learn in our blazer video. It's just low-end stuff, low-end fabrics, low-end construction, not worth your money. Now, ketone suits were always one of the most expensive ready-to-wear brands when I got interested in men's clothing about 20 years ago. Even today, they're still around. They produce a lot of high-end stuff. And one of the things with Ketone was always that these incredibly soft fabrics, relatively soft construction, full canvas, handmade details. They still have that today. So if you want really nice cashmere fabrics, really soft, very fine wools, Ketone provides that for you. Their suits are Italian, but they're classic. And they also had suits like with a clen check, with an overplate, for example, not just plain navy. In terms of pricing, they have a very high retail price. I wouldn't pay that. I would rather go bespoke instead. But if you can get it at a discount, you get a great quality suit. I would rank them A for sure. Now, what about Hugo Boss suits? When I grew up in Germany, a Hugo Boss suit was the epitome of a good suit for the average German man. Now, I think in recent years, especially in the US, they're a lot more fashion forward, and I would associate them with the men in black monochromatic look. Very fashion forward, worn by maybe sports people, not so much by clothing enthusiasts. Overall, I'd say maybe a C minus. The Chaps Ralph Lauren brand is something made for lower end department stores. And even though it carries the Ralph Lauren name, and I love what Ralph Lauren does, Chaps is not a suit line you should invest money in. Why? It's just cheaper stuff, and compared to the other lines, just not a good buy. So Chaps Ralph Lauren, I think, has good styling, but the material is not so good. It's in between a D minus and an F plus. Now, Polo Ralph Lauren suits are probably the most well-known brand because they're also carrying the department stores and they have the Polo Polo shirts, of course. So in terms of their suiting, they used to be made in the US and I love vintage Polo stuff. If you get like 80s or 90s suit, they have big shoulder pads and cool things. The more modern suits are typically made either in Italy or in Asia. I have a seersucker suit, for example, that I really like because it's harder to find seersucker suits from ready-to-wear brands, and Ralph Lauren Polo is one of those. Polo often has vintage-inspired details. They have really cool fabrics, and overall, I like their stuff. I would say it's a C in my book. So what about Hackett suits? Well, Jeremy Hackett has great style, and to me, he somewhat has this quintessential British gentleman style. Now, the brand Hackett is no longer in his hands. For a time, it was owned by a Richemont group and by a Spanish company, and now I think it is part of a Lebanese conglomerate, part with a subsidiary of the LVMH house. Their stuff is definitely not made in England. It has a somewhat English appeal, maybe a bit of preppy things in there, but like the Paul Ralph Lauren with an English twist. I think their suits have a softer structure, so I'd grade a maybe a C minus. In my book, they're slightly below Polo Ralph Lauren. Now, what about Ralph Lauren purple label? My first really good suit was a rope stripe suit in navy from Ralph Lauren purple label made in England. Those were made by Chester Berry, and I think their quality was absolutely phenomenal, and I would rate them an A. They have a really cool silhouette. They're soft. Even though they're full canvas, they're just superb. The fabrics are also wonderful, 
If you can get your hands on them in a size that fits you, get them. They're great. Now, the more modern Ralph Lauren Purple Label items are all made in Italy. They're different vendors. I've heard Caruso made them or St. Andrews. And I have a few of those pieces as well. I think the details are all still great. The fabrics are great. The workmanship is not quite at the level of Chester Berry anymore. So I'd rate them a B. So now let's talk about Chester Berry suits. Chester Berry is originally from Crewe in England. They sometimes had trouble. They were bankrupt and then they were sold and bought. Most recently, I think they went bankrupt in 2019, which is a shame because I always liked what they did. Now their styling was a bit more old school than what they did for Ralph Lauren Purple Label and maybe a little stiffer, so I didn't like it quite as much, but it's still quality construction and it was at a fair price. Overall, I would rate them a B. Now there's also a brand called Chester by Chester Berry and it's nowhere near the quality of regular Chester Berry. In my book, it's a solid F. It's just cheap junk. Don't buy that and don't get confused by it. I think that brand is still around, but just stay clear. Now, Caruso suits are made in Italy. They also make for many other brands. They have different levels. Overall, I would say it's more in the C, C plus range in my book. What about Bijan suits? Well, Bijan is a very high price boutique in California, I think in LA. Now, Bijan suits use very expensive fabric. They definitely cater to the luxury clientele for whom money is of no concern. Typically, their suits are made in Italy at a good quality level, not the top quality level, and their fabrics are definitely the most expensive. The prices they charge are astronomical, and I would never pay that. But sometimes you can pick up a garment, maybe on eBay or secondhand, you'll get a good thing. This year on their price, overall I would say Bijan is a B minus. Chiffonelli suits are more well known for their bespoke garments. It's a Parisian bespoke house. But a few years ago, they started the ready to wear line, which they spearheaded with John Bizon, who's an American who started at Alan Flusser and then worked over 25 years for Ralph Lauren. I had a pleasure of having lunch with John once. That was before he worked with Chiffonelli, but he was wearing a Chiffonelli bespoke jacket and he was just raving about the fit and the shoulder and the comfort he has in the jacket. So he really was into the brand before he started working for them. Their suits, I would definitely grade an A because they have the pedigree of bespoke. They have their signature shoulder that is quite roped and you just can tell that someone who really knows what they're doing input the information into this ready-to-wear line. At the rake, you can get a suit for under $3,000 and on their website, it's a little more expensive, which is definitely a lot. And you can get bespoke suits for less than that in other countries from less reputable bespoke houses. But overall, if you can get a hand on a Chiffonelli suit, grade A, you probably will like it. Next up are suits from Cesare Attolini. Typically, they're mentioned in the same vein as Keaton or Isaia. Attolini, I think, used to work as a head cutter for Keaton and then branched out. I think if you compare Keaton to Attolini, Keaton has softer fabrics. Some people say better fabrics. And Attolini has maybe a little more attention to detail and a slightly better construction. They also have a very unique fit. They also have a made-to-measure program, but again, we just talk about the ready-to-wear stuff. If you can get your hands on it and it fits, it's definitely an A-grade kind of suit. Belvast is another big Italian brand. They are a solid maker of suits. They also make stuff for many other brands like Prada, for example. And in my book, they're never quite in the highest A grade. They do have different quality levels. And overall, I'd say it's a C plus. Cornigliani suits are similar to Belvest. Solid Italian brand. They make stuff for other labels, such as Polo Ralph Lauren, for example. And again, I'd grade them as a probably C plus. Now, suits from J. Crew are basically a step up from H&M. There are mass-produced suits. Maybe they have somewhat nicer fabrics. The fit, nah, not my cup of tea, but overall, it's a grade D. Now let's talk about Xenia. Xenia used to be a supplier of fabrics, and then they went into the manufacturing of clothes as well. They have lots of different lines. They have Xenia Couture, Xenia Triple X, blah, 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 Z for Xenia, and it's hard to actually get them all graded apart. 
I would say the Zinnia Couture, their highest lines, which is also what you see in a Tom Ford garment, is very good. I would call it probably a B, not an A category kind of suit. Price-wise, suits on their website range from about 3,700 to 5,500, which is quite a bit of money, and I would not spend that on any Zenia suit. Their Z-Line is definitely a step lower, so it's probably more in the C grade. Frankly though, I can't keep up with all their different lines, and typically I find them overpriced, so I haven't really looked a lot into them recently. Now what about Express suits? Looking at their prices from about 350 to 650 a suit, you might guess it's a step up from like H&M. Personally, I find their suits to be more in the F range, maybe F to D, but that's all it gets. Now the suits from Hawes and Curtis are very comparable to Charles Tirrett. They're both more entry-level suits. They both have a more British styling. They try to be a bit more modern and youthful in their cuts. And I would also compare them to Galliardi, right? The sleeves I find can be rather tight. You have to size up. That's definitely what I had to do. It's a little tight in the back. And so overall in my book, it's more of a D, D plus. What about the suits from Ring Jacket? Ring Jacket is a Japanese brand and they have a great focus on quality. When I was in Japan and I walked around and looked at their stuff, nothing really fit me, but then again, I'm a lot taller and bigger than the average Japanese person. There are a few brands in the US now who also carry Ring Jacket. There's the Armory, which has their own styles of cut. Overall, I think it's high quality of workmanship. I'd probably rate them B plus, maybe in between A and B. Now, Edward Saxton ready to wear suits definitely are influenced by his bespoke styling which means it's a very bold shoulder, the wide lapel. Some people say it's like 30s inspired, but I think he has a very good style. There's bespoke detailing in his suits and you get nice fabrics. Now, if you look at pictures of him in the 70s, you can see things were a lot more extreme. The tie knots were huge, the shirt collars were huge, the lapels were even bigger. Today, everything is more toned down. And even though it has a very unique style, it's still classic. In my book, it's in between an A and a B. Now, Eto suits, they're usually quite expensive. They're anywhere from between $1,800 and $3,000. They're very fashion forward, very bold, very slim. They definitely run small in their sizing. Personally, I wouldn't spend anywhere near retail price for their stuff, but if you're in the market for something out there, this may be the brand for you. But because I'm not that person, I read it. Mm. What about Giorgio Armani Black Label? Well, I know a lot of people look at Armani as the quintessential Italian high-end suit, but all these labels, Gucci, Dolce & Gabbana, Armani, they're fashion labels, and because of that, you pay for their design, you pay for the name, not so much for the garment. Yes, they have a Made in Italy label, but they're mostly machine-made, and in my book, they're more of a D, maybe D plus grade suit. Now, Canale suits are a step up from that. It's another Italian brand that has solid construction, solid fabrics. They are sold at department stores like Nordstrom's for under $2,000. It's a good quality suit. I would say C grade, maybe C plus, but not better than that. Davenza is another Italian brand that makes for other companies. And there's a bit of variation, but overall a solid C. What about Joss A. Bank suits? I know it's an American staple. They're more at the entry level point, but personally, I don't think you'll get anything good from there. I once saw a tuxedo from them that was made very cheaply, so I wouldn't recommend you investing money into those brands. Solid F in my book. Now, Wentz Warehouse definitely has more expensive suits, but the broad range, you know, the $100, $200, $300 dollar range of suits, definitely get a solid F from me. Now, what about Paul Stewart suits? Paul Stewart, I think, has a very cool styling. They're classically inspired, but definitely on the bolder side. So, if you want a red and white seersucker suit, Paul Stewart will have that. Ralph Lauren probably won't. All their stuff is probably labeled. If you look at all the things that were made in Canada, most modern stuff is probably made in Italy. Overall, it's quite pricey, but even on their website, they discount heavily. 50, 70% are not unseen. So if you want something that's a little more out there without going custom, 
I can see Polestar working for you if you buy it on eBay secondhand or steeply discounted. Otherwise, I'd say it's more in the C grade. What about Palsilieri? Well, they have different lines. The higher end lines are better. I had a friend who used to sell a lot of high-end used garments from Keaton, Atolini, and he would always call Palsilieri a suit brand for pimps. I'll leave it at that. Still, in terms of construction, I'd say more of a C brand. Now, what about LBM suits? LBM is a sub-brand of Lubium. It's an Italian company. They have Luigi Bianchi Mantova, which stands for LBM, which is their higher-end line. I would grade that more as a C, maybe with some B potential. Their LBM 1911 line is really inexpensive, but completely unstructured. It's a shorter jacket. It's cut very slim, you know, slim lapels. It's for the modern young man. And because of that, they're really popular. So I think if you like that style and aesthetic, you're getting a pretty good value considering the low retail price. It's made in Italy. It's definitely not the best manufacturing. So I would say maybe it's a D plus for the LBM 1911. Luigi Bianchi Mantova is elevated. Honestly, if I had to buy a new suit and I wanted something comfortable and I wanted a modern look, this is probably a brand I'd go with. Top and suits in my book are a solid F. We check their blazers in our blazer guide. It's just modern crap that is low cost and it's just a waste of resources in my book. Now let's talk about suits from Luciano Barbera. Their Sartoriale line is typically made by other labels to a very high standard. Luciano Barbera has a very good taste level. He's a very well-dressed man and that's reflected in their suit lines. So if you can find Luciano Barbera Sartoriale, I'd rate them an A minus. And when I started, suits from Orazio Luciano La Vera Sartoria Napoletana weren't really around, but now they are. And I think they're a very high quality garment if you like the Neapolitan style. There's lots of handwork in there. You get a wonderful suit, especially if you get it on sale somewhere, maybe on eBay. They're gonna be a lot less expensive than lots of other suits. You can find them used probably or secondhand or on eBay for under a thousand dollars. It's a good buy. I would put them in the A, A minus category. Whew. That was quite a few brands. Now, if I've forgotten any, please share with us in the comments and also provide your grade for them. If you want to learn more on suits, check out our playlist here. And if you're on a budget, there's really no shame about that. But rather than going out there and buying these cheaper brands, you can get the higher end brands for less if you follow the playbook I present to you here. In today's video, I'm wearing a suit that was made for me, because this is kind of a pattern you probably don't get in a ready-to-wear suit. It's a flannel from Vitale Barberi's Canonico, made by my tailor. It's double-breasted. It has some interesting lapel features, a Milanese buttonhole. So it's a cool, bold suit for the colder months of the year. My shirt is checked in light blue, brown, and white from Spear McKay. My tie is from Fort Belvedere. It's knitted silk in two-tone light blue and navy blue. And you can find it in our shop just like the silk pocket square in brown and light blue. The pocket square ties everything together with my Loke 1880 Chelsea boots in a chocolate brown suede. My socks are two-tone solids with tactile and cotton in a melange gray, which pick up the color of the suit quite well. Because when you wear a suit that is that bold, you want to keep the rest somewhat toned down. Last but not least, I have a ring, which is kind of Art Deco-inspired silver with a stone called Hawk's Eye, which is similar to a cat's eye, and I like it quite a bit. 